りました。私私そうなんです。はい。ありがとうございます。ここに撮っております。ありがとうございます。はいはいいや、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私
like some group of mentors and then every 10 minutes switch so we will have some consultation something like that so these are the possible topics i will flash it later during the workshop time and uh also we have a guest uh mentor from peru <laughs> yeah felix uh yeah later i will give you time to talk about uh, about uh but uh he's a uh, entrepreneur and considered uh, one of the top 100 disruptive entrepreneurs in Peru in 2016. And uh, she is passionate about digital entrepreneurship and technology, innovation for sustainable development. That's why we also thought that it will be a good help to hear, hear something from him because he has already experience in Peru. Okay, so go back to the presentation. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Self-introduction. Okay, start. <laughs> Self-introduction. Mm. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Dr. Uh, I'm a first year of Frontia Medical Science course. Master course student. I still need to see. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Kana Mariguchi. I'm also a Frontia student. I'm a first year student of Frontia. <laughs> so maybe I'm next. I'm Arvin. I'm a fourth year student of the Human Biology Program. Nice to meet you. So uh, my name is Ken Lee, a professor of molecular cell biology. Actually, I'm a course coordinator, but uh, um, I have a uh, very, very fortunate that I have a very nice teaching assistant, Arvin, and the Sayama. <laughs> so I can discuss all of the teaching, <laughs> teaching assistant. Thank you. 
like to start our presentation. Uh, we, will, uh, we went to uh, the Nagano Prefecture as our field trip and then uh, we divided to uh, two groups. So first I will, uh, we would like to introduce no field trip. <laughs> so we we visited three hunters and one farmers because they are related to some problem of wild animals. So the first day we visited two hunters. Uh, how to say? Two hunters and the second day. We visited one hunter and one farmer. So, uh, sorry, we should explain about this first. So, our main focus is wild animals which disturb local people in Nam. So, our target people is farmer and hunters. So far, I'm a farmer group. So our target is people who work on farming as their hobby in our prefecture. In our prefecture, and especially mountainside, there are so many ways to prevent wild animals. However, too hard to too hard these ways are too hard or expensive for their hobby. Uh, so I we think. Uh, they need to the way to prevent wild animals an easier and cheaper way. So our product is handmade repellent, repellent liquid and the way of spray. This is a photo of a uh, liquid which made by which made of uh, chili peppers. And we select the candidate uh, which prevent to prevent wild animals, chili pepper and garlic, who is uh, other animals, and acetic acid and some organic chemicals. We would like to prepare various samples because uh, if we choose only one sample, uh, wild animals may adapt to this smell. So we would like to prepare various samples and change the change the samples depends on uh, adaptation of wild animals then after we made this uh, our product uh, we think two ways of application one is just playing directly by horse or some how can I say so just playing directly and uh, as the other way is combined with other equipment uh, such as automatic splinter. Oh, sorry. 
and we now we think about two uh, blueprint of our product. One is uh, connect our product. The sorry, uh, one blueprint is this is our product and uh, connect this tank to uh, that connect to hose and uh, direct spot directory spot to some points and second way is uh, make using uh, combine with the this type of sprinkler and uh, and wildlife normally come from a mountain side so if we put this type of sprinkler on the mountain side, maybe it will prevent the coming of wild animals. But this is, and now we trying to adapt this sprinkler to our product. But uh, there are some, uh, but this sprinkler uh, have to connect to top. Yeah, it needs a uh, strong water pressure. Pressure, yes, thank you. <laughs> water pressure. But uh, normally, the, this kind of farm is a little bit far from house. So we, so next week, we have to adopt this type of spring well with. Uh, to how can I say tank, not top, but this kind of tank. So if you have some idea, please advise me. Should we continue to convert in? Mm. Okay. So as I told you, uh, we met three hunters and the, we found common problem of them. So it's empathy, personal empathy map of fall and hunters. And yeah, the biggest problem is all the hunters getting older. So to carry the animals is, you know, the so heavy work for them. So yeah, and they they have to carry even in sleep away or in the bad weather. And the size of wild animals could be bigger than the wild man. Yeah. So to deliver white animals. But and we try to um, contact with hunters again and he said they they cannot use wheel cart in the mountain because you know the in the mountain there are so many trees and so many rock and near river it's so slippery. And there was there will be 
so mud, the ground will be mud or maybe snow, so they cannot use wheel, wheel car. And they usually use just a rope to drag animals. But, yeah. So, at first we plan to make this kind of transportation too, but without oh. in if you use this kind of product, the blood will be how to say drop, so drop a lot. So we combine with the back like waterproof fabric. And if, if the animal is so big, we can open this, like this, so they can carry by multiple people. And the bug can be dragged along. Yeah, in the last class, uh, yeah. <laughs> this one. Yeah, that one. We brought prototype one, just prototype one. So it's so, you know, <laughs> fragile. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is the rubber. Yeah, and I forgot the animal. You did it great. So, uh, the, if the animal... So, they are me. Yeah, I'm the animal. <laughs> yeah, so if the animal is small, you can carry on your back like this and if the animal is so big you can open like this this one and in the last class Marita-san uh, gave us some advices like if when we carry on our back we need some belt here and you have to think about the, uh, this part, the joint, because if the animal is so heavy and it, if it's not strong enough, it can be broken. And yeah, and we at first we think about using this kind of rope to tie animals but she said it, if, you, if you use like belt with buckle it, be, it will be easier to use and sorry I didn't prepare the slide and, but after the last class we went to workshop in medical area and the workshop by suggest us to use summer bed you know this kind of like on the beach <laughs> um, yeah so it's strong enough and we can fall and we already <laughs> we already ordered the summer bed <laughs> and today today we Ask him to remove some unnecessary part because we we didn't expect it so big. <laughs> <laughs> so then. 
that pro oh. Oh, that prototype <laughs> become like this. Yeah. yeah. So ma mm -hmm. we, we still don't have any belt or a bag, but yeah, it's like backbone. So you we can like carry it like in there. Yeah. You can carry? Yeah. Oh. Like this. And the if the animal <laughs> <laughs>
So I, I was thinking how these hunters pick what kind of animals are they going to hunt. It's 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 fine. I haven't seen here there. But can be. <laughs> so probably you could uh, discuss more in during the workshop session. Yeah. Yeah. So next group. About what? No, hmm? no, about no, no, no. You will uh, present more? Or? No, 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 no. Ah. I mean, some comment for Palma. Ah. Mm -hmm. After this meeting, we will have some talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We are, we are going to have a, a question session. Oh, we have a workshop, so like in each group, you can enter each group and have a hundred conversation.
Is Vanuatu or what is Vanuatu? No. I haven't okay. seen the picture before, but... Mm. I it here. Actually, this one is a cannibalistic ritual that oh. they are doing, that they used to do in Vanuatu. Uh, so, Vanuatu is an island in South Pacific, and it consists of around 80 islands, and we just visit one, the capital island, Epati. Uh, we visited eight villages, 11 communities, one primary school, three high schools, uh, one university, two hospital facilities, one land field, one water treatment facility, and three natural landmarks. Uh, good point to remember that half of the island doesn't have access to electricity. So the eastern part does not have electricity. And so after one week, one week of traveling around the island, uh, we realize and focus on two main problems, cooking practice and health care education. Uh, for cooking practice, we saw like uh, most of the ladies were cooking. It wasn't a, a job for a man and uh, always uh, use a small room outside of the house. It was really dirty, full of ashes and black from the charcoal. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, kitchens were usually outside of the house. And uh, also sometimes they face some uh, cooking wood shortages because almost everyone uses cooking wood to uh, open a fire and cook their traditional meals. Also in healthcare uh, sector, we faced problem in educating young uh, and adult also uh, for vaccinations and other infectious diseases uh, or sex uh, uh, transmitted disease. And also we heard that the, some parts of Vanuatu believe, still believe in black magic. So some of them, they believe that vaccination is not good, something strange in my uh, body, I don't like it. Uh, so we, we try to travel those two uh, issues. So let's start with the cooking practice. Again, kitchen was usually outside of the household, made from simple materials, just wood and scrap metal. So uh, the cookers were affected from natural a phenomenon like winds and rain, uh, no chairs or tables, usually they are sitting in small stools on the ground, and no foods, of course, because it was like open, so the, wood, the smoke were everywhere, and of course, no electricity. And also, we observed the tools that they use, so our product would be more appropriate for them, and most of the houses they are using. Uh, open fire? Oh, how can I say? Like, just like in camping. Yeah. And uh, without any metal um, containers to prevent any fire to escape. And some traditional means they used uh, heated volcanic rocks, and we kind of like that too. And we try to interpret it in our product. And uh, they also use banana leaves, as you can see from the background, to cook some food, and also coconut fibers as fiber stack. And then we decided which is our target, uh, uh, our target. And most of them are the normal housewives. So their job is to cook and. Um, provide food for the hungry. Uh, so okay, and also the most of the housewives were having like a, they were unemployed. So they was cooking almost every time and the spare food were uh, selling outside of the villages to the uh, 
for the plasma inverse that pass from the reading. It takes some extra money to the family. So, yeah, again, cooking was a women's practice. This was an exception. It was a baker. And as you can see, it was like a camping fire. Sometimes they use these metal uh, cylinders and a lot of ashes. And also the volcanic rocks. And the stools outside of the village is selling the extra food that the ladies were cooking. And also don't for forget that half of the island has uh, had not uh, access to electricity. But everyone had a smartphone or a tablet. <laughs> so we try to find some already existing products to, and, and see how we can tackle these issues. And we find rocky stove, but it's like a really simple structure, just a tube and a fire with air passed through, and that's increased the amount of fire and decreased the wood consumption. Uh, also the volcanic rock solar cooker was a really nice product. I see they were selling it in Africa. I don't remember exactly the place, so it used uh, solar power to heat volcanic rock. So they don't use wood, just uh, heated rocks. And also the electrifier wood stove, which generates electricity from fire. And we try to combine those products. Also we found this product that it has a really nice statistics that uh, consume 50% less firewood and makes cooking 50% faster. And we try to combine the uh, rocket stove with, oh sorry, uh, the lava volcanic rocks and the thermoelectric generator. And we come up with this idea. <laughs> uh, so, combine the rocket stove with the generator. And actually, we have some, <laughs> some uh, first product, the generator. Actually, the rocket stove is still on work. So, it's quite heavy. But, so, how it works? This is our miniature. So from this side we can put the firewood and wind will help fire to grow into a cylinder. In the surrounding of the actual cylinder we will put some volcanic rocks so they can keep the flame, the heat after the flame will go off and also a little generator that transform the high temperature inside the cylinder with the cold temperature of the water tank to electricity. And then they can charge their phones. And it's quite simple, just some thermoelectric plates. So from the one side is the heat and the other side is the low temperature of water connected to a power pump, a mobile uh, battery, and then just plug in your USB and charger. And this can be detached from the actual stove. So you can finish cooking and then take it to your room and charge your phone.
I tried it with my soul. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, and it's working.
we make the prototype mm -hmm. grouping of we made a rule. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. I explained the rule of this rule of play play. Uh, in play play, a weak way to go is decided according to the number of the dice. So this is an example. If the number of the dice is one, two, three, uh, players go this row. On the other hand, the number of dice is uh, from four to six players lose a turn and have to stay <coughs> in this, this circle during yeah, one turn. Mm -hmm. um, and the table of play play is very easy. Uh, players compete, compete against each other at the speed of reaching to the goal.
talking about uh, fermentation technology, being able to make biofuel from a food waste. And I thought, ah, that sounds interesting. Because when I was in um, Fuji Bank, I was to, um, part of the project finance, really big uh, infrastructure project. And I, I, care, I had a little bit care about the environment and stuff, and thought it will be great if you can make biofuel from food waste. So that's how I started to, to um, give up all my career and enter um, the college. But I basically, I was just there for four years and like, like as a college student, and I didn't finish any masters or nothing, just learned the basic. And then made a company called Formation Station. And um, of course, uh, the fermentation means uh, the mixed word of fermentation and station. And what we are trying to do is to make a better use of the unused resources, like the biomass and food waste and the things that that's not being like valued much. But just by fermenting, I thought it might give you more values. So fermentation is trying to be a platform to give values to things that people don't care much. And, but there are lots and lots of um, people, professors and uh, students, doing the, the research about the giving values to the unused resources by using the, the fermentation technology. But sometimes it's difficult, because many times people expect you to like, make a new material, and then people will come up with this idea that factory has to be big or you have to make the market, you have to make the place lower. So that's the challenge I've been mean, hearing all the time. But um, we decided to take a really different approach. Like, I don't care about the big plant, that kind of approach I'm trying to take. So right now, um, quickly explain what I'm doing right now. This is um, a picture that I took in Iwate, Japan. You know what this is? It's rice paddy. And right now, one third of rice paddy in Japan is not being utilized much. And I don't say everything is like this, but um, um, we, we don't eat much rice anymore. You know? Because um, you eat pasta, bread, and even rice farmers eat bread for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and also the number of population is decreasing and people say like maybe we can export but no way because it, it's really expensive and not everybody can succeed by selling rice to selling to other countries. So many rice paddies being deserted but it's not good to leave it as it is like um, for the, to keep the environment and also um, it, it's you know, there are many rice farmers and agricultural business and they need to find solution to make money. So I came up um, together with um, the rice farmers. We thought about this idea to first to grow rice, it's, um, it's organic. That rice as feed, not, um, not rice to eat. And you can see, you know, it's weed everywhere. And it's like, oh my god, it, it's so ugly. Japanese rice farmers are so into this idea that rice paddy has to look beautiful. They're like, it, it's, it's just so crazy. And, but I, I told them so many times, no, you don't need to worry about it. Because um, we don't eat them. And we don't care about the taste. Then people got used to it. And so this is how it looks like. But it, it's all many price. And it's been selling really cheap, but um, sorry, it's on Japanese. But um, as to quickly explain, um, that my company, the project started as a project of a, a city government, a city of Osho in Iwate. Um, that was to make a better use of the rice paddy and to make biofuel from rice. And we spent three years doing all the experiments, getting fund from the government. But um, so these are the people who are um, like the team members, the rice farmers, and also the, um, the people from the city of Oshu. And we had lots and lots of meetings. And we, we had uh, the small um, equipment to make um, ethanol from rice. But you don't 
by doing, we realize that there is no way we can make money. Because um, if you want to, you make ethanol and use it as um, fuel, it will be just like a dollar per liter. Yeah. But our production cost was like $200 per liter. And it, it was just too expensive. Mm -hmm. But but then the, real, um, the big earthquake happened. And somehow we also that the residue was used as feed. And then, you know, everything stopped in Iwate. But we could provide feed to the local farmers. So we kind of like this idea to make biofuel and also feed. But there was no way we can make money. So we discussed about it and then I came up with this idea to sell ethanol, not as a fuel, but a material for cosmetics. And that time, I was just a consultant or like a member of the, the project. So I never thought that I would do it myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, yeah, maybe you can't make money, so maybe you can sell it as a fuel, not as a fuel, but as a material for cosmetics, and you do it kind of thing. But we spent three years and, um, and ended up that nobody want to do the project <laughs> in Iwate. So I was like, oh, okay. But I spent three years really into this project and really want to do it. So um, the people, city of Oshu people talked to me, you want to do this, right? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> you are not from Iwate, you are from Tokyo, but maybe you can do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so that's how I started doing this. So when I entered at Tokyo University of Agriculture, I never thought that I would do the real business myself. I was trying to be the consultant and let people do. But right now, so that's what I'm doing right now. So what we do, I work with uh, the local farmers and make um, ask them to make rice just for us, um, dedicated performance station. And we ferment and distill and make alcohol. And I have all my product and alcohol um, also here, so maybe you can smell and see you later. And so as a local cosmetics. And the residue is also um, used as a feed. And even we use that the manure of the hen and use as a fertilizer. So it's a, um, a zero waste project. And right now, our ethanol is it's really expensive. <laughs> It's super expensive. It's like 100 times more than the conventional alcohol. Why? It's because it's 100% traceable. And there is no alcohol that's 100% traceable in, in the world right now. And when I started, people thought, like, you must be crazy. And nobody really understood what we were trying to do. But, you know, um, the time changed, and now people really talk about the SDGs and ESGs, and, and they're like, yeah. It might make sense. So um, I, I have some um, clients that uh, value, though expensive, but they can talk that our product use organic rice alcohol, that's under traceable, that kind of thing. So it's a, also the marketing issue, but um, that's how we sell. And for your information, alcohol ethanol is used not just for biofuel, but it's used, um, it's a commodity that we use every day. It's, um, right now, I'm, I'm talking about cosmetics, but, but I also use as a sanitizers and perfumes and all kinds of things that we use every day. So right now, I'm focusing on the real expensive stuff, but later on, I may also focus on like the food additive stuff. So the market is relatively big. And right now, conventional alcohol, ethanol is either made from a petro petrochemical stuff but, or fermented, but uh, it's either sugar cane or corn. And as for the corn, it's um, the GMO product. And there are certain people who are really into the non-GMO type of product. So there's a certain market for there too. And, and that right now, people really talk about the traceability and social responsible stuff. And people talk a lot about the palm oil, but no alcohol yet. But I really have a feeling that the, there's going to be a market soon. And the, the issue that, that ethanol alcohol has right now is they don't know where it comes from. So I'm cool. like, I know where it comes from. It's 100% traceable. So that's the, the advantage. And these are, might look a bit difficult, but if you want to really think about the business, you should also talk about the, the market. 
because these kind of things are really important to talk to the, like, uh, like the financial people or uh, the venture capitals and stuff. And also, that's not it. You know, you ferment and they still make alcohol, and there's a residue. And I, I say it, it's used as a feed, but also um, by doing the research, I realize it's also like really treasure stuff, has a really good stuff in it. And right now, I'm getting that fund from the middle. I'm, I'm part of the middle uh, entrepreneurship pro program. So it, the, the money itself is not that big, but it gives you really good credit. And right now, I'm um, working with um, some universities and trying to find out what's in it. And it can be used as material for cosmetics and also can be might um, have the really good stuff and might be able to sell as a the material for supplements and stuff. And, but um, first, when I, talk, when I started talk about alcohol, nobody really appreciated anything. So in order to tell people and give them a proof that my alcohol can be appreciated in the market, I decided to make my own brand as a proof of concept thing. And also, because there's no way I could make money, there's no other way. So I first, I started to make a facial soap <laughs> made from that, that residue. Because if you're a Japanese woman, you should know that the rice is really good to your, health, um, to your skin, like rice bran and fermented rice. And so I put, dumped it, dumped in the, the material and made a really good uh, organic natural um, cosmetic product. And I'm not a cosmetic manufacturer, so I ask the, the, the natural cosmetic companies to make my own plan. And also, more important thing is I ask the really good designer to do all the creative stuff. So it has to really look fancy. Um, so that's my plan. And so, how, so far, I'm being pretty lucky and getting really good um, place to sell, like a really good um, shop in Ginza, the department store, and like Isetan and Shibuya. It spent four or five years selling all this product, but we're doing pretty good. And um, looking at this, all these um, shops and people came to me, and this is a really big news for me, but um, you know the word OEM? The, um, there is um, the brand and they ask you to make a um, product. You know, um, there's a um, the major um, big select shop company called um, Sazabi Lee in them. And they have this shop called Akomea. It's in Ginza, um, Shibuya, Takashimaya, and all many shops. And they came to me. And we want to have our own brand using your material. It's a really good marketing for us. Cause this is a really mm -hmm. new product, and uh, it's not being um, sold yet. They just gave up this release yesterday, and this product will be in shop from uh, 11 December. Two weeks from now. See this? These people, uh, my people, like my uh, rice farmer friends, they're like the huge poster in Ginza. <laughs> and we were the one who were making rice for you. And uh, the Sazabi League made all this product like hand soap and cream and all kind of, um, many kinds of cosmetics. It's going to be on, um, on stores pretty soon. And they not just selling the product, they talk about us also. So it's a really good marketing tool for us. And there are um, other um, brands doing the similar, similar thing right now. That's how I make money right now. And the, the reason that we can do this is because we spent eight years fermenting almost every day. Um, so we, we really do have um, the know-how. First, we didn't succeed, and sometimes we smell so bad, it smells like we so bad. <laughs> and this, I do this in Tokyo. I, I go to Iwata almost every week. But I hear from them, they're like, ah, it smells so bad. And I'm like, so well, what's the reason? And I don't know, it just smells so bad. And so I just have to go and smell it again. That's, that's pretty challenging. <laughs> but I spent eight years doing that. So now we're like a really expert fermenting rice and make alcohol. 
and also it's eco-friendly. This is really um, important, especially dealing with um, the known Japanese like American or European brand. They really do appreciate this kind of approach, and also like a no animal testing kind of approach. So we are being really careful um, to make um, the every single material and not make um, a waste. And while I'm doing this, we had uh, I had the lucky to get some award, and then um, I could be on media. Mm -hmm. So we were on the, the documentary, we were on NHK and um, magazines and news, um, news and, and then what happened was people started to come. Uh, it's called Shisatsu in Japanese, mm -hmm. like the, the city of offices or like so many people started to come. First I was like excited, yeah, I'll come to Iwate and miss you. But they come too much and they don't pay much. <laughs> they just come and see and they're like, yeah, this is really interesting. <laughs> but they're like taking all my time and money, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it became a bit stressful. And I was talking about this to my local friend and they said, maybe we should make an organization and start to do, like organize a tour. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so, we started to have, um, um, together with our rice farmers and the local people, um, to do like a um, um, b and b type of place, and the young people, and also the Henga, who does um, the egg. <laughs> we made an organization start to do the tour and workshop. And then if, um, if non-Japanese people come, we have like um, the 30, 40 um, students from the States, and also last year we had 40, um, people came from Israel mm -hmm. and they liked it so much so they're gonna come again mm -hmm. and maybe again <laughs> but this is really good because um, that doesn't give us much money but in Iwate it, they don't meet new people it's, it's not healthy right so I'm trying to give a really good like a uh, new way whether they like it or not so I'm <laughs> trying to bring a many like variety of people to, to so that they can know what's going on in the world so that's what we're doing right now and a little bit about the, the business uh, right now the market needs is to not to make a really big plan and make it lower but it's more like um, the personalized like your own type of customized product so that's um the trying that approach that we're trying to do. And in order to do that, we need to have our own machine because nobody has done this before. There is no company who can make a factory or plant for us. So I'm right now working with some of the local factories, not big companies because it's too expensive and they spend too much time and they never give you the right thing. <laughs> so I work with some of the local um, the factories and get, but, but also get the really good feedback and know from big companies trying to make a good balance and have our own factory. And also one more thing about um, us is, um, you know, the people who make material for cosmetics and stuff or any material, they don't really talk with them, the end users, right? Mm -hmm. But because I started um, the company by selling soaps and I was selling I, ten, I spent 10 hours all day in the department store saying, oh, hello, I'm a special so many from rice. So I really do know the market and how the, the people react and also the, the price and structure and stuff. So that's the advantage that we have right now. This slide is also, it's always shocking to the, the big companies. Like they were like, oh yeah, no, no, no. But, but this is um, the big, fact is not what we're trying to do, but we try to focus small size or the middle size and do not just rice, but there are lots and lots of unused materials right now, like peaches and the apples that's, um, that drop, that, that they can't make money, or, the, um, like, or millet, the millet brand, or many things that come to me, because 
you know, I talk a lot about fermentation and make a better use of unused um, material. So many people come to me, here's an unused material, but what do you want to do? <laughs> so sometimes we have to be careful. And my, my staff is like, oh, no, no, we, we don't want to do this anymore. But um, I've been pretty open <laughs> to new opportunities and try to use um, lots of lots of um, new materials. And what we want to do is, the situation that I want is to be able to, like, you go to Whole food store in New York, and people pick all, like, there are many cosmetics, and people look at that, the product, say, oh, this must be a good product because it has a fermentation alcohol in it. So that's that's the, the, the situation that, that I'm hoping to, to, to achieve. And one more thing is this is really good um, new news. Yesterday, um, I got the award from the uh, city of Aomori. Thank you. It's funny. Um, you know, it's a JRE, um, the big companies, like, they need, you know, it's a recent trend, but really big companies. They, they have this problem of that, 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 you know, they talk about innovation, but they are not innovating much. <laughs> so they're trying to work with uh, entrepreneurs and startups to get the idea. So there are lots and lots of problems. And I was part of the JR East program. And they are uh, like 25 or 20 some startups got pitched to work with JR East. And it's a really good challenge, you know, for a uh, product. And I've been working with them for like half a year. And yesterday was the time to, to talk about what we're doing. Like, what we're doing right now. <laughs> See, it's funny, all these people, like the people who got our they got the money, but I got apples.
the beef business. It's really important that uh, it has a good smell because um, sometimes it, it may have really good um, stuff, but it means nothing unless they eat it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, well, we did that analysis. And as a, to prove that, see, <laughs> they love it. <laughs> This is uh, the, the fermented fruit apple residue. Mm -hmm. so it's a really good proof. And also right now, <laughs> um, we're going to feed it to the, the kettle and going to sell it. And the good thing is, you know, uh, we're going to sell it at the, um, the JRL um, Hotel. They have a really good restaurant. And I asked them that you have to buy a whole, not like a, just only a steak. That doesn't solve the issue, right? If you, you, they have to commit. So I persuaded Gerald East to buy a whole one <laughs> cow, and they they budgeted it, so it should be okay. <laughs> and also, um, we're gonna do a tour to bring people to Iwate and also Aomori to to see the the sustainable agriculture and what we're doing. So that's. Um, that's what we're trying to do um, using the JREs platform. And that's the pitch I gave yesterday and got the luck to get that, the box of Apple. <laughs> so it's a, a, a little bit um, additional of what we're doing right now, but um, basically, that's it. Do you have any questions? How do you check if your product is okay for human skin? Oh, or um, definitely no. Uh, alcohol and everything. The product. Um, I pay money, and uh, there is a certain companies who does that kind of thing. Uh, so yes. mm, it's kind, of, it's expensive, but it's really important. So yes. we really make sure that that it's okay. And also, we're selling the alcohol and the fermented rice to the cosmetic companies, like uh, major cosmetic companies. One of our clients, our listed company, is really, really tough and strict. We, we always have to give them a, a proof and send the information. So that's being proven by a certain company. And is there any difference between rice, ethanol, and apple ethanol? Yeah. Um, properties or yeah, um, not only smell, but yeah. Um, you can see the, the difference. But we did uh, so much analysis on the rice alcohol, but as for the apple alcohol, um, we haven't done much. So we're gonna start as, um, not as um, cosmetics, but we will start as uh, stuff that we will not use to your skin. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a like, room spray, fabric mm -hmm. spray, or aroma diffuser. That's mm -hmm. safer yeah. for yeah. us also. But um, maybe you can see the difference of uh, conventional, normal alcohol that you use, um, like you before you get the injection. Thing. It's the same thing, but it, it has a little different smell. And also, one more um, big news about conventional and um, it's not being released yet. So we're gonna give a press release maybe, maybe next week. So it. it Please keep it just to yourself, but um, we succeeded in getting the, the, the fund from venture capital. It's a little big news because I, I was being funded from uh, the local bank, a fund, um, but um, venture capital run by local bank, but the, the next round is going to be really good, really real venture capital. And, <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's going to be big news to the industry itself because farming station has been regarded as um, you know you're doing good thing but doesn't seem to make money kind of approach I was getting over time. But um, I never felt that way because I was I'm so convinced that this, they were gonna be a big market and we can make money. But finally 
there are few people who start to feel that way. So I really do feel that the, the industry is starting to change. That's, that's so what are the challenges to people? Uh, uh, I have a, a question. Thank you for sharing your, your story. It's really, really nice, amazing. Um, I was wondering if you are thinking in another uh, final product for these, uh, for your alcohol, your handy alcohol, um, apart from the cosmetic industry, maybe trying to diversify into, I don't know, or other kind of, of things, maybe sake, or I don't know, I was thinking in... Yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking. Um, these are examples of the, the product that the alcohol is being used. I started from cosmetics, and, and especially I'm, I started from like organic cosmetics, because that industry give a bit more value to our background. But um, cosmetics and perfumes and things that's relatively expensive. But um, by by getting fun and make our factory a bit bigger, not big, 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 but um, that the price can be of course lower. And then I will start I'm thinking about starting to talk about the like um, um, aroma spray or the, like the sanitizers, no, not the real sanitizers because it, it requires a really refined alcohol, but and also food additives and of course sake might be um, one of the, the market. The, one of the largest market of alcohol in Japan is uh, additives to sake. Mm -hmm. um, the Japanese sake, they they use alcohol made from uh, sugar cane or corn to to make the quality equal or to dilute to some extent. But then there are some issues because my alcohol has certain smell. It sort of destroys the their approach, right? <laughs> so it it shouldn't have a smell or some like uh, additional stuff in it. But there's um, certain sake places that um, that kind of like our alcohol and we're talking about it. But to, to um, for the sake makers to change um, automatically, my alcohol should be the, like a conventional alcohol. That might be a bit challenge, but also I hear that the, um, you know the Japanese sake makers are trying to export sake, but sometimes they have the they have the problem that because they add alcohol, it it that the level because made becomes made in Japan and Brazil because <laughs> the sugar cane comes from Brazil and that's. <coughs> it's one of the the, the problems that they have right now. <coughs> yeah, probably you could uh, make your own uh, alcohol brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people come to me and you should make beer and whiskey and stuff. But <laughs> yeah. in Japan, there is a uh, the certain rule, mm -hmm. and alcohol over ninety percent is my area. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, the, the control by making. And the alcohol under 90%, it's a drink. So it's a really, it's the same thing, but it's a, a different regulation and stuff. And it's a bit tough to get the license for uh, drinking sake. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll focus on the yeah. materials. Oh, okay. So the regulation for making sake are more kind of difficult to get. It, than for cosmetics, so say. No, actually, it's both. It's so tough. Oh. Right now, in Japan, only 21 companies have the license to make alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right now. And we are the only small company. Mm -hmm. And all other 20 companies are like uh, Asahi, Kirin, mm -hmm. the, the major the alcohol company. And they make alcohol as a material for their own product, like Chuhai and stuff. So it's 
so both are like really strict. Uh, I have another question. Sorry for so many questions. Uh, I was um, wondering uh, what do you know about the handmade sake so far here in Japan? Are they some are some companies working on that hand handmade handmade sake? Um, small maybe great breweries trying to make some like green as small productions of handmade sake? Um, no, um, as for beer, there's uh, the, like the de-liberated right now, but it's a little invigorated industry right now. Uh -huh. And in order to get the license, you, there is uh, like the minimum quantity that you have to make. And it's like so big. It's not something like you and your friends can drink up. <laughs> so that's, that's a challenge. And, um, but as for the process itself, maybe there are many kind of sake breweries that most of the work is handmade. Uh, like the small um, brewing places, it's all made by hand. So it's handmade, but not like a really craft like this size. It's, it's impossible right now because you need to commit a certain amount. The reason is, um, is the like a historical reasons that the government is trying to minimize the number of the Basaki brewing and also also show to brewers to be less competitive. Oh, okay. So so that's the background. But as for beer, we start to hear more and more craft beer type of places. But um, there are a few um, um, reasons. Um, sometimes they're allowed to make small quantity of beer, as far as they provide beer in the shop, in their own bar. So it seems like there is a lot of difficult uh, regulation. So to, to, to make a uh, ethanol from the apple, so the, I'm wondering, you used a uh, special kind of microbe Ah, it, uh, that the microorganisms are um, to ferment. Yeah. Right now we're using the same stuff um, for rice also. But, okay, um, just, just yeast too. Yes, yes. Oh. But um, we also use um, the enzymes to, to dissolve like the fiber and uh -huh. before. Uh -huh. but right now I'm working with um, some levels to find our own um, yeast. Because I'm trying to not gonna make our um, alcohol price lower, but I'm trying to make it higher and more and more expensive. Uh, actually, there are many type of the yeast species for the for yeast species for the Japanese sake for the uh, yeast species for the wine. Mm -hmm. so which, which type of yeast do you use? Right now we are using the one um, the best for shochu. Because the, the temperature is a bit higher, and mm -hmm. we don't spend like two weeks, three weeks to ferment. Mm -hmm. And we search like from over 100 types of um, the yeast, and there's a certain yeast that we pick from. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. The next part will be the workshop section.
group A, group B, and group C. Okay. So we we'll start. Um, are they, so, so five minutes and we change? Yes. Okay. So five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Um, uh, group A is here, group B, yeah. and uh, C. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you have to stay for a
total different and also and the hustlers the way they get involved in his problem There's is no very, what I want to say is that his you problem can find is very data different from your problem, mm -hmm. you know? So you need to tack on, you need nice. to want to want to That picture is, was, a, I think, that approach. was... The, the picture was really good, and I also think that you have like a lot of material problems. with the interviews that you did. Uh, you are. The ones you asked. Now, how do you carry and uh, the answer with verbs and this kind of thing? But the right. way you presented it, may, it was it it may seem that that So maybe you can do it like, you know, like like a meme, when you have the picture or something, and then I use ropes, you know, very clear, like very visual. Then Maybe there are two different like, um, like so you have like the, I, I here, two different like the picture of somebody, one of the hunters, ah, and then just like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you have, you have a, a slide. You have a slide that has like this. Mm -hmm. And it's super confusing. Mm -hmm. And it can get very boring and interesting presentations. So you need like visual impact and okay, the problem. So if it has a face. You may even better. So then the next step is the same age as my daughter. Who is like that. the person that mm -hmm. is going to mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. the same thing? Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. is going to use my phone? Why they are going to use my phone? Unless letters, they already have a final talk about it. Mm -hmm. I sure think that they will have a separate yeah. presentation. Because mm -hmm. it's what they did now. They have a single introduction. People still focus on the letters, not. That's why it's they stop this or it's here, here, for the like, yeah. audience like yeah. to like have the backstory. And if you have yeah. could find so, the data like um, how you have a empathic mm. analysis, right? Mm. 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 So mm. Mm. there is some mm. way it have to be precise. No, 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 no. I don't know. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
hunting. So you could say that children are going to eat their crops to learn more about it. It's very different. It's like pure text or something or book. And game is more interactive and they can repeat each day. So you could compare like boring text book. They might be able to make money. To your game because it's like one to the user game if they see the book. It's so, a fast body. I don't want to say I don't know who you're talking but, uh, to, but uh, the information in the book is it's important. Not, so that's you need to transform the uh, information in the book into the And game. if you like a Google so a little bit, there's a lot and lots of places yeah, to choose nice how do you like mm -hmm. the, the wild animal. What is to see it's a big issue. About, mm -hmm. um, and by uh, telling the bodies, you can tell the audience that uh, there is a huge market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once uh, I heard about it, wow, if you come up with a really good idea, you can make money, and really. No mm -hmm. You can sell it to just not even so the old people. Uh, so please, 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 I cannot please. follow the series. But it's a very nice It's really like a kind of thing. I actually was wondering, where can I eat this I don't know if you have 
you are prepared no, you know questions. Mm -hmm. So if you machines, know that it's pretty uh, obvious that one question is yeah. coming, yeah. then you, yes. just, uh, you need to present uh, or some data or um, something my else, but it's not but like was super important on your slides. Uh, it's nice to, even yeah. if you don't use it at the end, um, to prepare for that. Very, so very nice for if you have to say, yes, I prepare for this. The founder of this project was talking Maybe it's you know, and it's came like this actually how they did the interverse kind of simple. Okay. It seems to be simple, but it's actually not very hard. For the introduction, you can what, say what these people who are doing is trying to do so the machines. machines the issue are is how you carry the hunger. Uh, uh, Why well, you uh, can say the news calls right? like hunters, uh, you know, like market. market. Okay. Oh so, um, I mean, why is it that we are talking that one, the the that we are talking about, that we are talking about, uh, and, or it's very hard to mm -hmm. get